Um, my name is Karen Harvey, and I am the development specialist with MHY Family Services, um, also known as Mars Home for Youth. Um, so thank you for inviting us. Um, Old Union has, has been a supporter of us for such a long time, and we really appreciate um, and are grateful for all of your support um, throughout the years. And um, I'm filling in a little bit for Amy Smith, who is our Director of Development, so um, I am hopefully going to fill her shoes as best I can. Um, but first I have a, a quick little two-minute video that shows a little bit about what we, um, what we do at MHY, so we'll show that real quick. Evolving from an orphanage in 1878 to the premier mental and behavioral health facility that it is today, MHY Family Services is thriving forward as we meet the growing mental health crisis among our youth and their families throughout Western PA and beyond. Mental and behavioral health care has never been more needed. The increase in the number of children and teens suffering from emotional trauma, abuse, and mental illness has been growing for many years and the pandemic only served to fuel the surge. Healthcare organizations and counties are struggling to meet the demand for care, but MHY Family Services has been fortunate. With a committed support from our Presbyterian partners and donors, MHY has not only been able to respond, but expand and adapt our trauma-informed treatment services in order to bring healing opportunities to children and families in need. Vital programs for our residents are possible because of your generous support. Some improvements that you made possible are renovations to our aging residential cottages and facilities to ensure a safe and comfortable place for children to heal. We installed a new sports court flooring in our gymnasium, and we opened our family center where children and families can engage and stay connected in a home-like setting. Just the right place to enjoy a meal or play a game. Because of you, Longmore Academy now has a life skills classroom, so students who are managing intellectual disabilities can learn in a hands-on sensory learning environment to develop their independence and prepare for their future. MHY's Community Services has launched a new MST psychiatric program, the first of its kind in Pennsylvania, to provide therapeutic support to a child and their family by keeping them together in the comfort of their own home. You are the roots of our mission to serve children and families in need. Thank you for making the health and wellness of children a priority and for supporting MHY Family Services as we continue to thrive forward together. So that's just a little um, overview of, of what we do. Um, I'm not sure if everyone has been familiar with us, but we've been in existence for over 144 years. Um, so today I wanted to talk a little bit about Longmore Academy first, and then I have one more little video about our, um, our community services. But I know that your congregation has been supporting our Longmore Academy students, um, specifically with food insecurity, which um, over the past year, year and a half, has really become an issue uh, for so many of the families that we serve. Um, the children um, at Longmore Academy are in first through 12th grade, and they come from all over the region. Um, 35 school districts um, come and support, um, and the children come, and they tr are transported from their home school districts. Um, so we're excited. This um, fall, we just opened up a new autistic support classroom. Um, we also have li life skills. Um, which is a new classroom that we opened last year. Um, we also do um, special education, we have life skills, we have career readiness. So most of the children that come to us um, have behavioral and mental health issues. Um, some are special education where they're a year or two behind um, their biological age. Um, and all of our teachers are trained in therapeutic and trauma um, approaches to learning. Um, so our classes are 12 to 1 ratio. So we always have um, less 12 um, students to a teacher, plus a paraprofessional and an aide as well. So, um, so our school is um, growing. We're excited um, to be opening this autistic classroom this year. Um, that's in part to all the support that we receive from our community. And um, so thank you so much. Um, another portion, um, just to share with you real quick, 
We have had residential programming for all the time that we've been in existence. Um, unfortunately, this past April, um, we closed our residential facilities, um, and that was in part due to the labor shortage. Um, unfortunately, as, our, um, as the need for mental and behavioral health has grown, um, unfortunately, in order to have 24-7 um, care for the students, um, we were unable to keep those programs open. However, at the same time, we've also um, had community services for over 20 years. So that's where we have home, um, in-home therapy um, for families. And we are extremely excited because we just launched a multi-systemic psychiatric care, which is MST psych uh, program. And that basically is where children that normally would go to um, a residential treatment facility um, or be hospitalized um, for their mental and behavioral health issues, now we can treat them in their homes um, and keep them with their families. Um, so it's, um, we're the first in the state to offer this program. Um, we have a psychiatrist which goes into the home, which is pretty much unheard of in um, therapy um, needs. And so we are um, tremendously grateful um, and we're expanding programs where right now those two programs are in Butler and Beaver counties, and we're hoping to expand um, into Allegheny and beyond. So um, we have one more video that just touches a little bit more on that program, so I'll share that real quick. So thank you. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, by the age of 16, more than two-thirds of children reported at least one traumatic event, such as school violence, domestic violence, loss of a loved one, serious or life-threatening illness, and others, including physical and sexual abuse or assault. Hello, and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Sheila Highland. One local organization is at the forefront of helping youth and families to cope with trauma-based issues. Joining us today to talk about these issues are Lisa Schiller, Executive Director of MHY Family Services, and Lucas Carruthers, Director of Community Services at MHY. And Lisa, Lucas, thank you so much for being our guest today. And let's start with you, Lisa. Give us an understanding of the short and long-term effects of traumatic stress on children. Well, I really appreciate the opportunity to share this work. Trauma is something that all of us can identify with. We all have experiences in life that are challenging. Where trauma is defined is when we simply have difficulty adjusting from it, that, that bouncing back, that sense of resilience. And when we think about children and long-term effects into adulthood, trauma impacts everything about our life. Our ability to learn, our ability to form relationships with other people, our ability to uh, communicate well, and then to be a productive member of society. Uh, Lisa, your organization has been helping youth and families for more than 135 years, which is incredible. MHA, I know, has a physical location in Butler County, but your reach extends far beyond that. Tell us more about the work that you are doing. Uh, MHA is, as you said, we're in Mars, where we uh, have our offices for some of our community service programs, but they're also located in uh, throughout Butler County, Beaver County, Allegheny, Crawford, Venango, and Franklin counties. Um, we've also added uh, Lawrence County to that portfolio as well. And then we also have a private academic school um, that provides a therapeutic environment for students in grades one through 12. And our students come from all throughout the region, typically as far as an hour to an hour and a half away, they might be bused in. And these are kids who come onto the campus each day and then return to their homes. You are helping so many kids. And, and right now, teenagers really need help. Um, according to data from the Centers for Disease Control, uh, teen mental health was worsening even before the pandemic. What I want to know is what impact did COVID-19 have on teenagers and their mental health? When you think about the, the development cycle of adolescence, they're at a time in their life when relationships with peers, beginning some of that self-identification, beginning that independence away from parenting. COVID brought on enormous degrees of isolation where kids were not in school, kids were sort of prohibited from those normal types of activities, whether it was sports, um, the creative arts, 
whether it was simply some types of jobs. And the, uh, the lack of socialization and the supports that many kids had within the school systems. You, you didn't have a coach who provided support. You don't have that teacher who you could go to. It really created enormous amounts of isolation and, and, a, and a lack of coping skills. There's a real worry about the amount of screen time that kids have and what does that do to their ability to critically look at scenarios and build relationships. It's, it's really been quite detrimental. Lucas, I want to turn to you now. Talk about some of the unique programs and services that you offer and the effects that you're having on teenagers. Thank you, Sheila. Right now, MHY is offering a pretty wide continuum of services between in-home services, community-based services, and school-based services. All of those are really designed to work with either youth individually, with youth and their families, and with youth inside the, the school districts that, uh, that we're working they are really designed all those programs are designed around keeping youth in the home keeping youth out of the out of the law enforcement or out of uh, juvenile juvenile services and keeping youth in the school and, and performing well i want you to talk about a specific new multi-systemic therapy that you have called psychiatric adaptation what does that mean and how does it work the psychiatric adaptation is the newest adaptation of MST. It's very innovative. We're the first provider in Pennsylvania to launch this. It's extremely dynamic in that it service, uh, it targets youth and their families. It offers the entire family a comprehensive diagnosis with an individual treatment plan for everybody involved. I think one of the elements that make it extremely unique is that a psychiatrist goes into the home, uh, that's, which is unheard of in the mental health uh, community. Uh, another Another element that makes it also very uh, unique is that they work with the caregivers too. I think in, in classic uh, family and behavioral health services, they're working with the, the adults to try to treat the youth. But in this program, the psychiatric program, we're treating the youth and the adults at the same time so that they can work, uh, you know, work in a dynamic uh, way to be healthy and stable. And finally, just how can the community help youth who are experiencing trauma? I think the community really needs to do, uh, I think there's a lot of effort in education and outreach. I think what I've seen a lot lately is just regular uh, cold calls to our office, to our agency of community members really acting as their own caseworker, just seeking services because things are so, uh, there's such a backlog, there's, so, there's not a lot of services available now. And so I think an education around that and just really sort of a focus on what services are best. And I think it's incumbent upon providers to really make sure that there's services out there that cover everything that, that the community needs, including all the, the services that, uh, that don't fill some of those gaps. All right, Lucas Carruthers, Lisa Schiller, thank you for being our guests today and thank you for the work that you both do. Thank you very much, Sheila. For Comcast Newsmakers, I'm Sheila Hyland. Okay, so that might help explain a little bit more about some of our community services that we do. Um, again, with our Presbyterian partners and so much of our community support, um, some of the ways that you have impacted us over the years, most recently, sorry, um, is um, we showed in the first video, um, we installed a new gym floor, um, a sports court flooring system. Um, for about 30 years, we had an orange carpet um, that was in the gym, and that um, is not really conducive to playing basketball and volleyball, and rug burns would, uh, would occur on a regular basis. So, um, so that was one way. Um, our pavilion, which is right behind um, the school building on our campus, if you're driving down 228, we have a pavilion um, that we built about seven to eight years ago. Um, all of the other support um, helped us fund um, our new autistic classroom, um, our life skills, um, and in our life skills classroom that we opened last year, we did have to renovate and install a kitchen and a laundry um, room facility. So, um, so, so much of that is all due to our partners and supporters. So thank you so much. Um, one other need and the way that you have impacted us is um, the children that come to us um, when this, for the community services, um, all of their services are paid for through the county, but that doesn't pay for all of the family needs. 
whether it's from bedding, um, basic toiletries, um, food, um, clothing, winter clothes, boots, um, things like that. So um, we are grateful and we um, are we're just so amazed with the, um, the food program that you started this summer um, for our children at Longmore Academy. Um, we've regularly been trying to send home um, snacks and meals with them, especially over long holiday weekends, um, because we're not sure exactly how many meals those children are getting um, when they do go home. So, so thank you. Um, that is is making a huge difference, um, and and we are very appreciative. Um, and if anyone has any other questions, um, I do have some brochures and things like that. But please reach out. Um, again, we we couldn't do all of this without your support. So, yes, yes. They don't. But do they still get a worship service during the week or something like that? We don't. We are in the process of trying to figure out um, the best way to do that. And I know Peter um, has been one of our, our chaplains that um, has been with us for so many years. Um, so I know that they um, were willing to do some type of virtual. Um, and knowing that we've just been in this transition since we just basically we're able to find homes for the children that were living with us um, at the end of spring. Um, so we're sort of in that still transition and figuring out the best way to, to incorporate that. So but thank you for asking. So, so any other ways? All right. Thank you again. I appreciate it.